a few words about the upcoming 6G Smart Networks and Services Partnership. Can you hear us good, Mr. Wilcock? Can you hear us? Uh, I can hear you. The, aud the audio is not good. Uh, we can hear you, so maybe you can start. We'll see how it goes. Yeah? Please, the floor is yours. Uh, forgive me, but it's very, it's almost impossible to understand. You have feedback. Okay, um, maybe you can, um, what, what can we do? I think that you can start. Okay, Please. that sounds better. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for the invitation. So I wanted to say a few words about 5G and 6G research in Europe, concentrating on the European level programs. So maybe we can go to the next slide, please. So let me first introduce myself. As was said, my name is Colin Wilcock and I'm chairman of the board of what's now called the 6G Infrastructure Association. And this association tries to be the voice of European industry on all things 5G and all things 6G. So we have all the big names in telecoms, the Telecom Italia, Deutsche Telekom, Vodafone. We have Ericsson and Nokia and Samsung and Huawei, but we also include the SMEs and indeed the research institutes and the academics. So we have the whole ecosystem within our association. And one of the key things we try and do is we try and organize together with the European Commission research in this area of mobile communications. And we have been running this research program or what's called a research partnership called 5G PPP since about 2013 or 2014. And this has been instrumental in actually creating what we now know as 5G. So in the first phase of projects, we did a lot of the fundamental research, the concept development, which then led to much contributions to standardization to 3GPP, which is now part of what we call the 5G standard. In the second phase, we tried to build on this vision of 5G of being more than just a platform for existing telecom services, but trying to expand that technology to new industries, to new domains. So we had a large number of collaborative projects with other areas, be that automotive or smart cities, smart media, smart agriculture, industry 4.0. And we brought together the key players from the telecom side, but also from these vertical industries. So they could work together to understand the requirements, to understand the technology. Basically to convince these other industries that it is worth to invest in 5G technology. And over the time we have built up relationships, we have built up understanding and now from the trials that have come from these projects, we have now got more inputs into 5G standardization to further develop, to further evolve the 5G standard. And those contributions are now going in to 3GPP, driving release 18, driving 5G advance. In the last phase of this research program, we try to create innovation platforms, so cross-country 5G platforms where new players could come up with ideas, new business propositions, hopefully create the next Facebook, the next Google in Europe. Now, the last call for this 5G PB has happened, the so-called ICT 52, and those projects have started in January this year. But I think as we look back over the seven or eight years of projects, nearly a hundred projects, we can see that it has been a significant success in terms of the impact it's had on the 5G standard, the quality contributions, 
the bringing together the ecosystems from the telecoms world and these vertical industries. And that, apart from anything else, trying to make sure that we have that pre-standardization consensus, that we have the key players in these collaborative projects and they can talk to each other again about what 5G technology should be. So we believe that has been very successful, but clearly that is not the end of the story. Mobile communication technology will further evolve past 2021. Indeed, if we look at the trends, we see this technology becoming ever more important. One of the things from this COVID emergency, which unfortunately is still with us, is we see the importance of mobile communications, the ability to interact with people remotely, as I am doing today, has become ever more important. And as we use this technology to underpin more and more industrial domains, it will become ever more important. It will become the lifeblood of our modern industry. It will be vital that we have access to this technology going forward, and indeed that we have the chance to influence that technology. And that is why we need a new research partnership for Europe. And that is what smart networks and services will be. So if I can go on to the next slide, please. This proposal for this partnership has a broad backing across European industry, not just my own association, but many other associations on other related areas, be that cloud or IoT or software. The reason being that we believe 6G will be more than just a cellular technology. We believe it will bring these technology trends together, things like cloud, things like IoT, things like AI. So we need to make sure in our proposals and in our program that we have these actors together. And overall, there has been more than a thousand organizations either active or indirectly involved in preparing this proposal for smart networks and services. We are talking about a funding of somewhere around 900 million euros of public funding over the next seven to eight years. We can go on to the next slide, please. What are we trying to achieve? Well, well clearly what we're trying to achieve primarily is the underpinning for 6G technology, that next generation of networks. Now, maybe it seems strange to be talking about 6G now, when in actual fact, we're still relatively at the beginning of the 5G story. 5G is the technology for today, and it's a technology for tomorrow. We are just about to start with 5G Advanced, and that will be going on for at least until the end of this decade. However, these cellular systems, these technologies are very, very complicated. And we know that we're asking them to do more and more things and more and more things where it is safety critical, where it is underpinning our industry, where it's possibly underpinning our society. In other words, they need to work. They need to work reliably. And that means we need time to create this technology at the right level for deployment. And so now is the right time for deploying 5G, evolving 5G. But now is equally the right time to start that initial research for 6G. And that's what smart network and services will be doing. It will also be looking at the new applications, the new use cases. There are exciting ideas there. And it also clearly needs to try and keep that technological leadership that Europe has in this mobile communications domain. And if possible, increase that. We need to obviously take into account things like minimizing energy, uh, that green footprint, which is so important going forward. And lastly, we need to try and safeguard European values. This might seem somewhat strange thing to say, but there are some values, some ideas in Europe which are stronger here than in the rest of the world. They're to do with personal freedom, security of personal data, security in general. 
trustfulness in the network. And the point is, if we want our future networks to support these ideas, to protect personal data, then we need to make sure the technological hooks are in those standards. And that is one of the things we wish to do with this partnership. If I can have the next slide, please. I don't have time to go into detail. I, I'm running out of time very fast, but this is just a snapshot to show the very wide range of areas that we will be looking at, we'll be researching in this program. So smart network and services, we hope will start this year. So December this year, it has been approved by the European Council, the legal underpinning. We hope to have the first call, the first projects, or the first call for projects in January next year. Uh, this will be a significant first call, somewhere around 240 million euros in that first call. We would welcome working together with everyone on this call to make this partnership a success and to try and make Europe influential in 6G and 6G technology for the future, for our own prosperity, for the jobs, for the industry, 